today we're making a low cholesterol, low sodium uh, dish today. The dish is called chicken and bean sprout stir fry. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Um, the only thing that I added different was a little bit more salt to it because it was just a little bit bland for me. But we're going to go ahead and start on this recipe. I hope you like it and I hope you try it. So let's go ahead and get started. To start out the recipe, guys, we're going to make us some rice. So here in my rice cooker, I'm going to pour two cups of jasmine rice into the rice cooker. And I love jasmine rice because it's so flavorful and so fragrant. And it would be really, really great with this dish. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pour in four cups of water into my rice. Um, every one cup of rice uh, gets two cups of water. So that's four cups of water going into the rice. Put on my lid and turn on the power and there it is. Okay, now we're going to start on our sauce and we're going to put it to the side after we're done. So we're going to grab our tamari sauce. It's 50% less sodium and it's brewed soy sauce is what it is. I didn't know what tamari sauce was until I looked forever at the store. But it's soy sauce. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure out one tablespoon of low sodium tamari sauce now this is low sodium because it's a cholesterol dish and it's uh, gonna watch your sodium intake as well so just put one tablespoon of low uh, sodium tamari sauce down in your bowl and next we're going to grab our ground ginger this is not really ground this is actually grated i got some fresh ginger at the store and i just went ahead and grated it um, you're only going to need one teaspoon of grated ginger because ginger is very very strong and you don't want too much okay next you're going to need a half a cup of low sodium chicken broth that goes in the bowl now this is two teaspoons of honey and we're gonna make sure we get all of it out of the bowl when we put that in there so go ahead and scrape out all of your um, honey into the bowl Okay guys, now that we've got our honey in, we're going to go ahead and measure out our garlic. I'm measuring out 1 8 of a teaspoon of ground garlic and that goes right into the bowl with the sauce. Then we're going to grab our red pepper flakes. It calls for a pinch of red pepper flakes. If you like your food to be spicier, you can put more if you would like. but. I don't do spicy very well, so I'm just going to add a pinch. Okay, here is our cornstarch. That's what makes our sauce thick. We added one tablespoon of cornstarch. So what I'm going to do now is just mix this really well together. And um, I'm going to set it to the side and let it sit while I get everything else ready and cooked. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and start on our fresh ingredients. Okay, I'm going to show you what fresh ingredients I need before I cut it up. I need two sticks of celery. I'm going to need my yellow and red bell pepper out of this package. I'm going to need some fresh carrot. You can have the big carrots if you like. I have the small ones. And I have some muck bean sprouts. Uh, also, I needed some um, snow peas, but they didn't have snow peas at the store. So here I have them cut up. I have my red bell pepper that's thinly sliced, my yellow, thinly sliced carrot. I have some Napa cabbage because they didn't have the bok choy. I have celery that's thinly sliced and two cups of muck bean. Now, they didn't have the snow peas, so I'm going to have to just go ahead and put in some sweet peas that I had in the freezer. So let's go ahead and start cooking. And here is my chicken. They did call it for strip chicken, but I went ahead and cubed my chicken today. Okay, so in a wok or in a saucepan, you're going to grab your sesame oil and you're going to measure out two teaspoons of sesame oil and put it right in your pan to be heating up. 
This is one of the times that I really, really wish I had a wok, and I'm going to go and purchase one because for these recipes, for um, Asian style, it's just better to have a wok because they're, you know, deep pans. So, cast iron skillet is just going to have to do today. So, two teaspoons of sesame oil right into the pan, and after it's heated up, we're going to grab our chicken that's been cubed and we're going to put it into the hot pan and what we're going to do is we're going to fry this up until it is pretty much cooked through so it should take about 10 minutes or so 10 to 15 minutes to go ahead and cook this chicken and then we'll go ahead and um, put it to the side after we're done this recipe only called for six ounces of chicken, so if you have more people that are eating, all you have to do is just double the recipe measurements. Okay guys, this looks like it is just about done. It has been cooking for 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and spoon this into my clean bowl and set it aside so we can get started on our uh, vegetable stir fry. After you take the chicken out of your pan, you wanna make sure to at least wipe it out with a paper towel uh, to get all of the water and juices out of your pan. Okay, now that I have a clean skillet, um, I'm going to go ahead and measure out one teaspoon of the sesame oil again and put it down into my pan to get it heated up. I want to make sure my pan is really hot with the oil in there uh, because you want your uh, vegetables to cook rather quickly. We're not going to cook them all the way through. We're going to cook them until they're like a crispy tender, just like the, you know, Asian restaurants do. So we're going to make sure this oil is nice and hot and then we're going to start putting in our thinly sliced carrot. I believe I used one fourth of a cup of fresh carrot. So I thinly sliced them and put them into the pan. Next goes in our peppers. We're going to put all of our peppers in with the carrots. The only thing that I missed in this recipe, it didn't call for onion. I would have loved to have some onion in this recipe. So y'all can make this recipe your own. You can put whatever vegetables you want in this recipe. Um, I just went by the book today. So now I'm going to put in my uh, thinly sliced celery. And as you see there, I got a little bit of the cabbage in there before uh, it was time. But I'm going to go ahead and take that out here in just a second and uh, give our vegetables a toss. Okay, we're going to go ahead and give this a good mix and get it good and cooking. Um, this recipe did call for bok choy cabbage. The stores did not have the bok choy cabbage. I guess it's because of the shipping um, delays. I'm not sure. But they did have... Uh, Napa cabbage at um, at Walmart actually so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in my Napa cabbage um, I just shredded this with a knife and you're only going to need one cup of Napa cabbage so I'm going to put all of this Napa cabbage in there and the one thing I did do differently uh, like I said before I did put just a little bit of salt in with the vegetables to help them um, cook down just a little bit um, to help them cook through. Um, so I only put like a half a teaspoon of salt and I measured it out in my hand and I'm about to show you that here in just a second. But just make sure you toss all of your vegetables really good in the sesame oil to get all of them cooking uh, together. Mm -hmm. 
After a few minutes of cooking, you can already tell the difference in the color of your vegetables. They start to look more colorful and more vibrant. And now it's time to put in a half a cup of your frozen peas if you don't have snow peas. And now I'm going to put in two cups of the bean sprouts. And then I'm going to give it a good toss and make sure all of this is nice incorporated with each other. You're going to let all of this cook for at least about five more minutes just to make sure that all of the vegetables are uh, crispy tender. You don't want to overcook your bean sprouts because they'll get kind of mushy. Uh, you want them to remain a little bit crispy. So let's go ahead and just let this saute in the pan and we'll come back here in about five minutes. I'm going to bring you all in just a little bit closer that way you can see just how pretty all these vegetables are together and just how delicious this looks. After cooking for about five more minutes we're going to go ahead and give this a quick toss because we're going to now put in our chicken and our sauce to get uh, all over the vegetables and to thicken up. So after giving it a quick toss, we're gonna grab our chicken and put all of the chicken in with your stir fry vegetables. After putting in your chicken, we're gonna grab our sauce that we made earlier. And what I did was I went ahead and started in the bowl before I put it in, just to make sure the cornstarch is off the bottom of the bowl and into the mixture. After pouring all of the mixture into the pan, we're going to give it a toss and uh, make sure that the sauce becomes thick. It shouldn't take your sauce uh, very long to get thick in the pan. So what you want to do is if you want to add more seasonings as in salt and pepper or um, some more pepper flakes, you can go ahead and do that at this time. This recipe also called for a scallion. Uh, what that is used for is for garnish. Um, it also called for some sesame seeds. I didn't have the scallion today, so I'm just going to garnish uh, my plate with some sesame seeds. So it looks like it's just about ready guys, so we're going to go ahead and serve up our plate. Okay guys, I've got my plate of rice. So on a bed of rice, I'm going to spoon out two big old spoonfuls of this stir fry right on top of my rice. This looks so delicious. It smells excellent in my house and I can't wait to dig into this awesome low cholesterol meal. Okay guys, now I'm going to garnish my plate with some sesame seeds. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, uh, but here is my sesame seeds and I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of the sesame seeds right on top of my stir fry. Okay, now it is time to say our grace and start to dig in. Here I have my low sodium uh, soy sauce. I'm going to put some soy sauce on top of my meal because I always love extra soy sauce on my stir fry. So let's go ahead and give this a taste and see how it is. Alright guys, this is the moment of truth. Let's get a big old spoonful or forkful of this stir fry here. There's my stir fry. Okay, let's dig in. And right off the bat, I'm already loving it. As you see, I have food on my face and oh man, I'm hungry. And this is really, really good for a low cholesterol meal. Thumbs up to it. I'm definitely going to eat it again. One more bite. I hope you guys try this recipe out. I thank you so much for watching my channel today. And as always, um, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.